Hello everybody and welcome to a brand new Gentech PC product showcase. Today we're going to be showing you the Gigabyte P27K. So this is a Gigabyte branded laptop and it is 17 inches in size and it is targeted for a gaming laptop. We'll go ahead and unbox it, do a full review and all the benchmarks for you as we go through the video. So the first place to start is with a simple unboxing procedure. Of course, you can see that if you order this, you'll get it in a double box. The outside cardboard box gives you a discrete shipment so that it's not displaying to everybody that you're shipping a laptop. And of course, it helps protect everything from any kind of scratch and even crush damage. The inner box is where your product is displayed, and Gigabyte went with a solid black box with some red highlights. So it shows you a few images of the laptop and gives you a few of the system specs. We'll go ahead and get that open so we can show you all the hardware that you'll get inside. The inner box is compartmentalized by some foam inserts to help protect everything from shock damage and separate the components. Right away we can go ahead and pull out the power cable and the power adapter. And further down on the right hand side we're also able to pull out the system battery. Gigabyte is including an 8 cell battery with this unit. In the main center compartment, right underneath of the laptop unit, you're going to find a plastic bag that has the product manual, warranty registration, and driver's disc. All of these things are pretty standard, however, in addition to the standard assortment, Gigabyte also decided to throw in a disc copy of Power DVD for you. And now it's time for us to go ahead and remove the laptop itself from this inner compartment. As you can see, it does have the foam wings on both sides. That keeps it totally protected from shock and crush damage. And then covering the laptop, you have a cloth covering which protects it from any kind of scratches. Once we remove that, the immediate giveaway that this is a Gigabyte unit is of course that orange colored lid. If you're familiar with any of the other Gigabyte PC products, such as their motherboards, they often use that color scheme. So now that we have the unboxing complete, let's go ahead and move into the next part of the review. The P27 will be coming with Windows 8 64-bit as the standard operating system. Upon first boot, you have a few choices that you'll have to make for configuration, and then shortly after that, you'll be right into your desktop. Now that we have our system fully booted up, we can go ahead and model off the unit. At first glance, you'll notice that it's not a very flashy laptop. It's fairly basic with a matte black and a plastic body. The orange colored lid is the only thing that really stands out as different from a standard laptop. There is an option to purchase this laptop with a black lid, which would make it almost completely standard looking. So that can be a good thing depending on your preferences. The overall profile of the laptop is fairly thin, and you'll also notice that we have an anti-glare matte screen. Moving in up close and personal to the LCD screen, you're going to find the integrated webcam at the top. And right next to that is a very small opening that is used for the integrated microphone. The LCD screen is LED backlit, and it uses a 16 by 9 aspect ratio for 1920 by 1080 pixels. Now moving on to take a look at the bottom half of the laptop. Moving to the top right hand side of the unit, you'll find that you have your VGA key here and a few of your status LEDs. You'll take notice that the laptop does feature a full keyboard layout with the embedded arrow keys. And this keyboard actually does have a backlight feature. We'll be sure to show you that later on in the video by turning off all the lights and giving you a really good look at it. On the left hand side, we have a few more dedicated hardware buttons and the power button. Moving now to the bottom left hand side, we'll find some of the badges. The P27 sticker is here to let us know about the hardware that's included. Operating system, the CPU is the Intel Core i7 4700MQ. There's also the blue sticker right below that that shows you the Gigabyte 2 year global warranty. In the center you're going to find that you have an average size touchpad with a single left and right click rocker switch. And on the right hand side we have some of the individual product badges like the NVIDIA GTX sticker and the Intel Core i7 sticker. 
And the last thing to note here in the front that you cannot see are the speakers hidden underneath of the speaker grills. So let's explain these system specifications a little bit more. We know that the Core i7-4700MQ is part of the Intel Haswell chipset. We have three RAM slots, which means we can have up to 24 gigabytes of system RAM. And it does have a micro SATA SSD, as well as two additional 2.5 inch SATA drives. Now it's time to show you all the connections and interfaces along the perimeter of the laptop. Starting on the left hand side, we have the Kenningstein lock port, a standard USB 2.0 connection. We have three audio ports. This is belonging to the Sound Blaster hardware for SPDIF out, microphone in, and headphone out. And then we have our combo Blu-ray reader and DVD writer drive. Over to the front of the system, we don't have any connections here, but we do have the visible status LEDs to give you a quick heads up of any important statuses of your laptop. And now getting around to the right hand side, the first thing we have is a card reader that's built into the laptop. And that's followed by two standard USB 3.0 ports. Then we have a USB and E SATA combo port, followed by the HDMI output and your RJ45 connection for your wired networking. Moving over to the rear of the laptop, it's fairly simple back here. On the left hand side, we have our VGA output and next to that we have the DC power input so you can run off of your mains power and charge your battery. To the right hand side we'll find the single exhaust vent responsible for cooling the system. And now that we've circled the laptop completely we've seen all the interfaces that are offered to you. The only thing left is to show you the laptop LCD lid and the Gigabyte logo in the center as well as its geometric shape. Now moving along to the Windows Device Manager, we can see all of our hardware. You will notice that we have USB 4.0 in this unit. We do have the NVIDIA dedicated graphics card as well as the onboard Intel integrated graphics from the CPU. The CPU is the Intel Core i7-4700MQ, which runs at a nominal frequency of 2.4 GHz. And for those interested in the panel, the LCD panel is CMO1720. Now we have the lights turned down so you can see how the backlight keyboard functions. As you can see it's a nice white backlight that shows through to the keys and this gives you easy accessibility in the darker environments and also helps make the laptop look a little bit nicer. It's benchmark time, and of course ran all the important benchmarks for you. The first one we have is 3D Mark 11 with a performance score of 4,230. Here's the system hardware that we used to run that test. Also next up is 3D Mark Vantage, the performance score of 14,848. The GTX 765 mobile in this system does feature two gigabytes of onboard video RAM, and of course all of these tests were run at stock settings. During all of our benchmarks, we of course logged all of our temperatures, and the maximum temperatures that we were able to reach was about mid to high 90s on the CPU, and on the GPU it got up to 67 degrees Celsius. Also for those interested in the read and write speeds, because we do have a micro SATA SSD here, those are the crystal disk mark scores for you. And the next benchmark to run is of course going to be Fermark. This is the ultimate temperature test for your GPU. This one, unlike many others, actually forces the GPU to get up to its maximum temperatures and does not quite stress the CPU as high depending on the settings that you run. We were able to get the GPU up to 70 degrees Celsius and of course ran all of this at the stock settings. Over again, our temperature is logged. The CPU only went up to low 70s this time, showing the differences in the load between this and our last benchmark. And to verify the GPU temperature, here it is again at 70 degrees Celsius as a maximum temperature. 
Now it's time to cover the last few places of the laptop that we haven't been yet. And of course, here is the bottom of it. This lets you see the ventilation slots that you have available. Also, some laptops usually have a dedicated subwoofer that you'll spot from the bottom. We do have two separate access doors here rather than just one large one. The smaller one in the front is dedicated to a two and a half inch drive bay that you can use to install a secondary hard drive or SSD. Now with everything opened up, we can spot all the internal hardware and its connections. So we'll see the system battery was over on the left center. Up above that, you have one of the two and a half inch hard drive bays, followed by two of your system RAM slots. You have your heat sink for your graphics card, and then next to that you have the smaller heat sink for your CPU, and those are connected to a single system cooling fan. Down towards the center is of course the extra two and a half inch drive bay that we just spoke about. And there's the connection for the system battery. You have one additional system RAM slot, and you also have the micro SATA SSD, and those are going to be located under the keyboard. Gaining access to the under keyboard area first involves removing the plastic covering that is just above the keyboard and on top of the speakers. Once you remove that, you'll be able to see the screws on top of the keyboard that are holding it in place. Removing all of those screws means that you can now pry up the keyboard. Be sure to pick it up slowly and gently. Unlike other laptops, it's not glued down but it does have the ribbon cable connections that you don't want to accidentally pull out. Once you have the keyboard out of the way, you can see a lot of the other system hardware. You have the hidden RAM slot, the micro SATA SSD, your combo Bluetooth and Wi-Fi card. Also, if you ever need to, this is where you can access the motherboard's CMOS battery. And now everybody, that is actually going to be concluding the Gigabyte P27 product showcase. We've covered the unboxing, all the interfaces, we benchmarked it, tested it, and disassembled it. So we hope that this video was useful for you, but of course if you need more information about the P27K, all you have to do is go to our website, gentechpc.com. There we have the full product specs, current pricing and availability, and a whole lot more. And please remember that if you ever have any questions or need additional assistance, feel free to contact us by phone or email, and we're always happy to help you out. So once again, this was Gentech PC with your Ultimate Gigabyte P27K review, and we'll see you guys next time.